Welcome to Dispatches from India, a show by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from across the country, what Indians are talking about and the impact it will have on politics, economy and society. We first get into our news this week section. We start with a grief-stricken story from the city of Kannur in Kerala. A fisherman and a member of the CPIM, the Communist Party of India Marxist, Haridasan, who was 54, was hacked to death allegedly by assailants affiliated to the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, the RSS. This is the ideological parent of the ruling party at the centre, the Bharatiya Janda Party or BJP. The assailants were reportedly waiting near Haridasan's house near the seashore, hacking him to death on his return. His brother and relatives who live in the vicinity reached the spot, but their attempts to save him were in vain. This is, however, not the first incident of right-wing violence on communists in the state. Here is Students' Federation of India, Central Committee member Nitish Narayan, shedding some light on the issue. The history of RSS killing against the communist activists started some 16, 60 years back when communists were the on streets to resist the attempt to spread communal uh, hatred and violence. RSS had declared in India that they, had, they have three enemies, first being the Muslims, then the Christians, and third one being the communists. In Kerala, the communists have been the first target of the RSS for many years. And in the recent time, RSS how more violently attacked and killed many communist activists, Punol Haridas being the last person, many more might also follow. This is also an attempt to destabilize the Kerala uh, society, also to, to hide the people's friendly alternative uh, policies being taken up by the left front government. I also uh, reiterate that this brutal incident of the murder of a communist activist took place on 21st February when the left uh, workers, activists were getting ready to celebrate the publication of Communist Manifesto on the Red Books Day. On the one side, communists are celebrating books. On the other side, RSS is taking blood. It is uh, barbarism versus humanism. It is socialism versus fascism. It is book versus blood. Many sections in the country have been disappointed with the union budget 2022-23 to for not addressing their concerns. A number of organizations representing urban workers, farmers and agricultural labourers held a demonstration at Jantar Mantar in New Delhi today. The All India Kisan Sabha, Centre of Indian Trade Unions and All India Agriculture Workers Union convened to express their disappointment with the budget they believe will further push the working class in India towards poverty. We spoke with Viju Krishnan, All India Joint Secretary of the All India Kisan Sabha on the matter. Today uh, there were countrywide protests called jointly by the Centre of Indian Trade Unions, the All India Agriculture Workers Union and the All India Kisan Sabha against the betrayal in the recent union budget. Um, the budget has totally disregarded the concerns of the farmers and the working class. It rather is more like uh, seeking a revenge uh, on the farmers and the workers for the victory that they have achieved in the united um, struggle that happened from um, a historic struggle for more than one year in uh, India. The budget actually has seen a huge cut for agriculture. More than a lakh crore has been cut, allocations have been cut for agri uh, agriculture. The, the, uh, there has been cut uh, of uh, rural development uh, uh, allocations also has been cut. Even for uh, uh, employment generation, in this, the times of pandemic, agriculture, for agriculture workers, for the poor, it could have um, uh, helped them in the uh, uh, times of the pandemic. Um, even uh, for NREG, the Rural Employment Guarantee Act, there has been a drastic cut. Si uh, simultaneously, we also find that for food, uh, uh, food subsidies, uh, fertilizer subsidy, there has been a big cut that has been, uh, uh, taken place. So this um, uh, budget 
has been totally anti poor anti uh, farmer anti working class against that we have had th um, thousands of farmers and workers across the country who have had protests today uh, and um, there would, there would be a prolonged campaign which would be taken across the country to expose the pro corporate uh, face of the bjp government and expose the fact that this budget is anti people next we get into our in focus section where we take a deeper look at some of the burning issues in the country This month marked the first anniversary of the coup in Myanmar where the military overthrew the government led by Aung San Suu Kyi. The past year has been brutal with various sections of the population facing heavy repression. There has also been no solution to the dire crisis of Rohingya refugees who live in difficult conditions in many neighboring countries. On February 22, Rohingya refugees and rights activists staged a protest in New Delhi. Here is what they had to say. बर्मा में इतना हालत खराब है जो देश को सुरक्षा करने वाला देश का निवासी लोग सुरक्षा करने वाला फौजी लोग मल्टी लोग ने देश का पावर उन्होंने छीन लिया है देश का निवासी लोगों को सुरक्षा देने का बदले में जो जो से मारता पीटता जनता का पब्लिक का हा गड हा प्रॉपर्टी छीन लेते हैं चला लेते हैं उसी खिलाफ हम लोग यहाँ प्रोड करने के लिए आया बर्मा में अभी आनाशाही दोबारा आ गया एक साल हो गया इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी की तरफ से कोई खास प्रेशर नहीं गया है तो हम ये मानते हैं कि हम अगर इकट्ठा होकर हमारा आवाज को मीडिया के थ्रू और यहाँ के जो सिविल सोसाइटी के थ्रू इंडियन गवर्नमेंट को और इंटरनेशनल गवर्नमेंट को दोबारा ये याद दिला अगर याद दिलाएंगे हो सकता है थोड़ा बहुत इनको दोबारा याद में आएगा कि बर्मा में ये हालत हो गया एक साल हो गया बर्मा में हजारों लोग मर गए 2021 के बाद से और वहाँ पे प्रोटेस्ट चल रहा है और जो इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट है उनको डिटेन करके रखता है तो हमें जो है इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी का सपोर्ट चाहिए स्पेशली भारत सरकार का सपोर्ट चाहिए यह हम दोबारा याद दिलाना चाहते हैं एंड फाइनली वी आर इन मणिपुर स्टेट दैट फिनिश्ड 50 इयर्स ऑफ इट्स स्टेटहुड इन द ईयर 2022 इट विल बिगिन पोलिंग ऑन फेब 28 फॉर द 12th असेंबली इलेक्शंस इन द स्टेट To give you a brief history, Manipur was an independent state from 1947 to 49 after which it merged with the Union of India. In 1963 it was declared a union territory and in 1972 full statehood was achieved by the state. Our team spoke with some young women from the state addressing their concerns and disappointments with the government. This election this coming election I I can see the involvement of youths very well. Like uh, even uh, in going for campaigns and all the youths have played a major role and even in social medias and all the youth plays a major role and as for the involvement of women uh i i see a vast changes in the involvement of women uh yeah there are women involved in bureaucracy as well as and also in execu execution and all but yeah in legislature the percentage of women involved as for the past years it's not very much but we have seen this year we have seen many women candidates coming out uh yeah that's a good sign from what i have seen during this past bjp rule they were very biased so and i have faced some problems quite myself personally on that also so i prefer congress over this is going to be my first time voting for the election uh, so but then when uh, congress was in uh, like when congress was ruling before the bjp came uh, there was not so much of an issue uh, of getting jobs so it's not just about jobs it means like we didn't have to be that much scared of going out here and there or certain things as a girl as a woman so but now that bjp are ruling there are certain crimes that's happening and uh, it's not just about our safety 
but it's more about uh, if we talk about education also uh, there are issues that uh, how do i say because of corruption to be very frank this is going to be my first time voting okay. the election and like as i've seen and i've experienced i feel no particular party is like giving opinion for girls giving spaces for girls they put many things for girls in their manifestos i have seen that and even today i have seen like scooty for every girl child in the colleges yeah i have seen that it's a manifesto by bjp i think but i have not seen anything any party doing work properly regarding the women in the society and what the women had faces you know what women faces and all they haven't stand properly for women even once so what i felt was when congress was ruling uh, we thought the there was still corruption back then also but then now it have like tremendously increased so much i've seen manifestos pro uh, providing spaces for lgbt community and all uh, that's good that's like i i think it's very happy to uh, we have very happy manifestos no i don't but we'll see because we have like for the past few years people have been electing the same people uh, who won't do anything no this time the people the involvement is very high uh, right now uh, we have so many candidates uh, who had like do doctorate degrees who have, who are retired from high officials and all we have all that but i think empathy is a very important quality that every candidate must have now when the election is coming around means like uh, the, the the candidates who are electing you no know, uh, the candidates so uh, they are quite active in uh, involvement with the people like of their constituency but when election gets over or when there is a gap between the election uh, no before the election for the five years they, ha, yeah for the five years they don't involve that much with the people so i want them to <laughs> have little involvement with the people oh, uh -huh, yeah be consistent yeah 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 be consistent because Uh, we can see them coming only when the election is quite near. They don't do that when the election is over. We often discuss this, no? Like, uh, will you get a job in Manipur? Because it's it's there where it all started. So, yeah, I'm planning to come back here in Manipur and like start a life here. Uh, so, yes, because yeah, we need to do something. If we all go, I don't know who will bring the change. It's like small steps matter, so I think we can settle here. When I actually was studying uh, outside for quite a long, only for my master I'm here because of Corona I couldn't go out. But um, since the like study that I'm doing, like the subject that I'm doing, uh, it will be little difficult for me to get a job here. But um, I want to try for being a professor here in Manipur because the uh, the amount of lady professor in our college is quite less. So yeah, I want to come back. I'm not satisfied with the rate of the change, but small steps are coming up. That's happy. I'm happy with that. We can expect more in the coming elections. That's all I can say. We cannot bring up changes directly from where we were. And that's all we have for this episode of Dispatches. We will be back next week. Until then, keep following peoplesdispatch.org. Thank you for watching.